Seventh grade lesson 6.4 is solving two-step equations. In 6.3, we just had to translate them from English to math ease, and now we get to solve them. So let's get into it. They start us off by modeling the equation again with the algebra tiles, and then we learn how to use those algebra tiles to solve them so that our brain can kind of see what's going on. So let's take a look at the first example. All right, they give us this first equation, 3m plus 2 equals 11. And before we do that, let me remind you what each of those algebra tiles represent. You, the long bars represent an unknown number, x or whatever letter you want to give that variable, positive. A long bar at red means a negative unknown. Positive square is a positive 1, and a negative red square is a negative 1. And if you put two of those, a positive and a negative together, one positive and one negative together, as you well know, positive one plus negative one is zero. Um, and we call those zero pairs, and those come in handy as we're using this. All right, let's go ahead and model three n's. So those will be our x's. Three of these plus two ones equals 11 ones. Those are all positive, so let's have a look at what that looks like. Okay, so here I have three n's, the unknown variable, three of them, two ones, and 11 ones. Now my goal is to isolate those variables down to one variable, one of these bars, and have things split equally to know how much one bar gets to have. First thing, and then this, keep in mind, this is um, like a balanced scale, where if I do something to one side, I must do it to the other. We've been dealing with equations for a long time. If I do one thing to one side, I must do the same to the other in order to keep it balanced. So the first thing I'd like to do is pull these two out of there. If I'm going to do the opposite of positive 2, negative 2, to get them out of there, I have to do the same to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to take this two and this, this one and this one off. That's two off one side. I must do two off the other. That leaves me with 3x, or 3n I should say, equals 9. Okay? And if I have three of these n's, and they want to split the 9 that are left equally, then each of them will get 3. In mathematic, I would do the opposite of multiply by 3, divide by 3, which is what I'm doing here, is doing the division to both sides of my equation. I divided these by three, and I divide these by three, and I'm going to get one n will get nine divided by three, which is three pieces. So that's how that represents in modeled with algebraic tiles. Okay, one more example. We've modeled three n minus one equals eight. There's three n's or three variables. Uh, there's a negative one here, and then there's eight positive ones there. And I'm my goal is to isolate down to one variable. I'm going to start by doing the opposite of this negative one. Um, if I want to take negative one away, I need to go ahead and add one on top of it. And if I add one to it, remember our zero pairs? So if I add that one to this side, oops, that should be yellow, um, they are zero pairs and they will cancel each other out, let me pick that color there, and be zero. But if I added one to one side, I must add one to the other. So we used inverse operation, opposite of negative one was positive one to cancel that out to both sides of the equation. So now what I have is 3n equals 9. And then I'm going to divide these three ends into three equal pieces. They get to share these equally. Well, then they're going to each get, if I share them equally, each of them are going to get three little ones. Divide by three, divide by three, n equals three. And so that's the modeling of the solving of those. You guys have been doing the solving of equations for a while, so probably that was was just solidifying some information for you or it was already solid anyway. Um, but let's now look at the application of doing a, a two-step equation.
So we're just building off of the one-step equations you guys learned last year. Now it's a two-step equation. So it shouldn't tax your brain too much. I think if you felt confident on one-step equations last year, then two-step won't be much of a change for you. So we're given this example too. It's a word problem. And luckily in the last lesson, you had a chance to really uh, work on translating out of English and into math ease without even having to worry about solving the problem. And now we're going to add to that the solving of the problem. So again, our steps are always read it, underline the question, circle the information they gave you, draw what you need to draw to make your to help your brain make sense of it, and then we'll write the equation, and then from there we'll solve the equation. We have a dog sled driver added more gear to the sled. Doesn't say how much gear, but they did, doubling its weight. This felt too heavy, so the driver removed 20 pounds to reach the final weight of 180 pounds. Write and solve an equation to find the sled's original weight. We are going to write and solve an equation to find the sled's original weight. That's the question. What information did it give us? Well, we know the final weight is 180 pounds. Uh, we know he added some. We're not sure how much, but whatever it was, it doubled the weight of the sled. So he added some that doubled the weight. Uh, and then he removed 20 pounds. Okay, I think that's all the information. I have a sled. That's my sled. Uh, we added weight. And it doubled the amount that was uh, the weight. Then we took off 20 pounds because it was too heavy. And after all of that was done it ended up weighing 180 pounds. We don't know the original weight. We just know that it has been doubled, whatever it was. So we have two unknowns, doubled the weight. Okay, let's translate that into an equation. I have two x's. I took off 20, and that left me with a final weight of 180. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve using inverse operations. My goal always to, oopsie, I meant to do a pointer there. Uh, isolate the variable. So here's my variable and I want to isolate it. I want him alone. We'll start by doing the inverse or the opposite of negative 20 is positive 20. I must do that to both sides of my equation. That cancels. It leaves me with 2x on this side, and over here I'm left with 160. And now we're at a one-step equation, which is um, what you did uh, last year. This is x being multiplied by 2, and to inverse operation, or the opposite operation, is to divide by 2 to both sides of the equation. Keep it fair. And 160 divided by 2 is 80. Now, that's not my final answer. Always reflect back when you get your x equals, whatever your answer is, go back and look what you underlined. Write and so solve an equation to find the sled's original weight. What we learned is that the two x's um, were, well, one x is 80 pounds. So we added 80 pounds onto there. So if it was 80, uh, 180 afterwards and we had added 80 on there, what was it before we added the 80 on there? Let's take one of those x's off before we added the weight. It was 100 pounds. So one of the reasons it's really important to underline the question is that we should get in the habit of, once we get an answer, double check, is that answer answering the question or is it answering um, a piece of information that will help me get the answer? So always think about that. We added, this was reflecting what we added on. It was not reflecting how much was the original weight. So always take a look at that. Okay, we get another example with negative numbers. And we see fractions in there and some of your uh, brains start to panic. Don't panic, it's okay. We will get through this, I believe in you. Let's read through. To convert a temperature from degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, first subtract 32. Then multiply the result by five ninths. An outdoor thermometer showed a temperature of negative 10 degrees Celsius. What was the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit? And I know our brains are spinning like, what do we do? I don't know. What do we do? Do the next step. 
Anytime you're feeling, I would do the next step. Underline the question. What was the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit? Okay, still, what do I do? I don't know. All right, next step. Circle the information they gave us. To convert temperature from degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, first we will subtract 32, and then we will multiply the result by 5 ninths. An outdoor, temperature, uh, the outdoor thermometer showed a temperature of negative 10 degrees Celsius. That's all the information they gave. Let's go to the next step because probably you're still not sure what to do from here. Next step, we're talking about temperatures. So for me, I'm gonna draw a temperature gauge. And I know that to change Fahrenheit to Celsius, I would have to subtract 32 from whatever the temperature is in Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna take 32 away. After I took 32 away from this unknown amount, I would have to multiply the result. So I'm gonna use parentheses to show that subtraction has to happen first. Then I'm gonna multiply the whole thing by 5 ninths. Um, at the end, the t after I do all that, it says my temperature is going to be negative 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, well, that's all going to equal 10 degrees Celsius. Negative 10 degrees, Mrs. Sanchez. Don't forget your negative. Okay, so my picture was kind of equation and um, picture, both. But my brain just worked it through that way. If this is an unknown amount, um, I don't know what it is. So I'm going to give it a variable. I'm just going to call it x. I tend to use x. So I'm gonna say x minus 32, because it said to subtract 32. All of that times 5 ninths, because they told me to do the 5 ninths after I did x minus 32, equals negative 10 Celsius. Okay, so recall in one of the previous lessons we talked about the distributive property. We know that in order of operations, we're supposed to do what's in the parentheses first. However, my problem is, is I can't because of the x. So my way, my workaround for that is to use the distributive property, and that means I'm gonna multiply both terms by 5 ninths. So here I'm gonna get 5 ninths x, and then I have a negative times a positive, so it's going to be a negative. Off to the side, we'll do 32 over one times 5 ninths, uh, I can't, I don't think I can cross reduce, so I'm going to leave it like that. And 32 times 5 is 160. So I get 160. Probably good that my denominator stays at a 9 for right now. And that's where that distributive property put me. Now. Um, I just want to work towards isolating my variable. We'll start by doing the inverse of a negative 160 ninths. That would be a positive 160 ninths to both sides of the equation. That cancels out, leaves me with 5 ninths x on this side, and then some math to do over here. Remember, if I'm adding fractions, I need a common denominator. This is negative 10 over 1. I need that denominator to be a 9. So multiply both times 9. And that's what I have to do. So that's this one, and that is this one adjusted. Uh, be careful, and I missed this the first time I did this problem. I can't just add 90 plus 160 because that's a negative. So it's a negative 90. I owe $90, but I have 160 in my pocket. I'm going to be positive when all said and done. I'm still going to have money in my pocket. I just need to figure out the difference between them to find how much. Uh, it looks like 70. So I'm going to have 70 ninths left. So this is 70 ninths. Okay, let me clear up some space over here now. All right. Now I have... Uh, x being multiplied by 5 ninths, I undo that by dividing by 5 ninths to both sides of the equation. Okay, that's going to leave me with x equals 
And now I have to remember my divide with fractions rules. Remember, we keep the first fraction, change, divide to multiply, and flip, use the reciprocal of the second fraction. And that allows us to multiply instead. And that's nice because we cross reduce. Uh, 9 goes into both 9s once. That gives M5 goes into both of these. Uh, 5 goes into 70 14 times. 14 times 1 is 14. I didn't know that in my head, by the way, you guys. I had already calculated it previously. I would have, I did division to do it. Um, so we get 14. X equals 14. Go back to the question, what was the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit? The temperature was 14 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's the answer. So don't let the fractions scare you. You have the skills. You just have to kind of brush off the cobwebs on them. Um, you just needed to distribute this in. And yes, I know those fractions still make you some of you nervous, but you're getting better every time you do it. So we'll keep doing them to make sure you get better and better and better every time. That's what this lesson is. So you've been translating them. Now you're uh, the English to math ease. So now it's the translation along with solving. Um, the two-step equation, very similar to solving one-step equation, just now there's two steps. So I believe you will do very well. Good luck to you. Let me know if you need me.